Today I'm going to be tackling one of the most high-end and at the same time popular sellers in the Alta range, that's the Selma Reference 54, which is available in two finishes. First of all, this deep gold finish that you see in front of you here, and then also a vintage antique finish. Now the concept behind the design of this saxophone is that Selma are essentially modelling it on the 1954 Mark VI, the year the Mark VI came out, hence Reference 54 but it's not supposed to be an exact replica of this saxophone, it's supposed to be just taking the essence of this saxophone, if you like, and combining it with the more modern approach to the ergonomics and key action that's de been developed in recent years. And it's certainly good thinking on the part of Selma to do this, as one of the most common topics of conversation amongst sax players is how do various modern saxophones stack up against the famous Mark VI. And as far as I'm concerned, um, too many hours are lost in this particular conversation, uh, which can become quite a philosophical one, but I'm not going to get into that particular debate today. Um, it's also important to consider how it slots into the current Selma range. So we've also got the Series 2 and the Series 3, and obviously the reference in front of you here. So just taking the ergonomics first of all, it feels a little bit different to, this, uh, different to the Series 2 and 3, perhaps a little bit more compact, much like a, a Mark VI. Um, just taking a couple of small details here. So in the right hand we've got the, the E flat and C key stack. Um, this feels just a little bit higher in position. The actual buttons themselves are a little bit smaller. Feels quite nice to me. It just took a little bit get, getting used to the fact that that um, position is a bit higher. But when you get used to that, it's actually a very fluid. You can, you can move about very quickly, D to E flat, moving chromatically, etc. Up here on the left hand we've got this button style of front F as opposed to the teardrop style that you see on the Series 2 and Series 3 and many, many other um, modern saxophones. Um, overall it's very comfortable and sort of highly, highly playable. The key action feels very fluid so they've, they've done a good job in terms of the ergonomics, the modern ergonomics on this saxophone. Um, Selma also put a lot of emphasis on the dealer setting up their ho horns as opposed to them coming out the factory just like, um, for example, a really well-worn in Mark VI. Um, and, and this is sort of added value, if you like, that the fact that they will trust their high-end dealers to do a, a, a kind of, not perhaps a custom job, although that can be done, but certainly just make that horn purr nicely. The reason I mention this is when I first picked up the saxophone, although it was playing very nicely, I just prefer a slightly lighter action and our technician here, Colin, just spend a little bit of time on it and it now feels sort of effortless and really beautiful to play. Um, now, uh, when it comes down to it, um, you're going to be choosing this saxophone largely for the sound. So let's talk about the sound. Um, that's what it's all about. When you think of a reference 54, you're thinking, Mark VI, how does it sound? So that's the big question. Well, I, I really see the sax as having a very strong character to it. Um, it's got a very strong core sound that's very focused with a lot of Selma character in it. Taking the Series 2 and Series 3, they certainly have that Selma sound, obviously they're Selmas, but they're a little bit more blank canvassy. This has that very sort of defined, focused, almost sort of sweet centre to it. Um, and when I think of a Mark VI, I think of that strong kind of core sound. So they've certainly captured that aspect of it. And it's also a little bit more resistant to me than a Series 2 or, or Series 3, which isn't a bad thing. Resistance can be a good thing, particularly to jazz players. It just gives you something to push against. I'm not talking about the kind of resistance that you get in a big bore saxophone where it just sort of sucks the air out of you. Instead, it's got that sort of nice medium resistance that allows the player to really push that big sort of jazz bass sound through. Um, so, have Selma achieved their goal? Yes, to an extent, it is a modern classic, and yes, there's strong elements of the Mark VI in the design. I think it's probably unfair to compare it directly with a Mark VI, just simply due to the massive gap in years between the two instruments. Um, but it's sort of, in my opinion, that like a, a fine wine, this reference is certainly going to mature in years. It's going to be interesting to see kind of where it stands in the Hall of Fame in, say, you know, 10, 20, 30 years to come. So, a great sax, come on down and try it out.
Mm-hmm. <laughs> 